you are isolated to any other thing, it's a danger. We don't come to the presence of God because God has finished answering our prayer requests. No. Write the prayer requests today. We are going to pray more of them. But I want to let you understand. Why are we always coming? It's because the more we see, the more we want to see. If God answers everything you have written down today, you will still ask him for more again. So you are God who has problem because you will never be satisfied. It then means that if you truly want all of God, you must be willing at all the time in pains, in perils, in cry, in tears, in hunger to still be there for him. All this up to date, down tomorrow, is baby Christianity. It won't last long. The time we come, you will fade away. An astronaut went to space and as he was in space, it was a humorous story I had at home. As he was in space, he said, well, I'm in space now. Where is God? Where is God? Where is God? Just because we're able to go to Mass, you're asking where is God? How did you even go to Mass? You use an equipment. You use a machine. You enter inside something. Can you on your own fly and enter Mass? Why did you use something? And somebody told the astronaut, you are looking for God. All you need to do is to take away the thing that you cover yourself with. That thing they put in their head, take it away. Remove all those jackets. You will die instantly and you will see God instantly. Don't be asking for where is God and you are covered. Something is covering you. You have oxygen. You have this. Remove it. And when you die, you will see him. We want to see God. We don't want to die. Everybody see God at the point of death. There are two kinds of death. There is one that is a process. There is one that is a spirit. The other one end with TH. The other one end with D. One is a process. One is a spirit. If you want to see God, you must be able to go through death as a process. Many of you don't want to die to yourself. And you want to see God. The only time you are going to see God is when death as a spirit conquer you. And that moment you are judged. Don't take for granted your life. You are tired of your life. You want to kill yourself. Well, we have been speaking to you and encouraging you as much as possible. The time we come, nobody will be there. The day we come, I won't be there talking to you. In that day, how will you survive? If all the privilege and the opportunity you have been having here in Shekinah for all this while, yet again, you have not built up yourself in your most holy faith. When will you? When will you be serious with your life? Kill yourself, you will see God. Because life only makes sense in eternity. But it will never make sense for you if you don't have life in time. My last story for the day is the story of the man that just passed away, a patriot among our midst. Of course, he's a man in the West. How many of you know about Prophet Michael Wallowe? Olu Wore, right? One of the last surviving strands of the lineage of the CAC, Apostle Ayobabalola. A powerful prophet. Most times when you go to the West, you hear about him a lot. He heard from Ibadan. A man that ministers and hears God effectively well. I heard about the story of how much, because most times when you go and watch his ministration, you always see him with his hand on his ear like this. You realize that? You wonder why is Baba? They used to call him Baba Automatic. Why is he doing that? He said many years ago, the Lord, the same way the Lord appeared to Baba Lola, that the Baba Lola and said, here is yam, tuba of yam, right? And bell. This one, God appeared to him and said, See, give me your ear. Dedicate your ear to me. So Baba decided and give God his ear. So anytime he's preaching, it's like this, hearing God. A man whom his word does not fall to the ground. He 
If there are people that had a prophetic heritage in Nigeria, he was one. In Africa, Ghana has it, but they have lost it. But that man was holding it. The West is known for the prophetic. The North is known for the apostolic. And that's why until your ministry begin to enter through the Western region and the Northern region, you can't conquer even the East. Many people don't understand this territorial operation. Most men that are conquering the West, we are schooled in the North. Most people that are conquering the North are schooled and they have affiliation with the West. Those that have a voice in the East partake of either the West or the North. It's a prophetic thing you may not understand. And this man passed away and it looks as though nothing happened. The level of dishonor that has entered the body of Christ that man can still go and yet again who are the people that we cannot come and consult and say we are our prophet it became so hard now that to find one genuine prophet is hard mention one you don't know you can count all kinds of apostolic voices but what about prophetic voices and that is why God needs to do a lot of work and that's why I'm trying to let you know there are so much vacancy so much work needs to be done so we must restore back the culture of a genuine, sincere heart posture of seeking and pursuing after God so that the possibility that is abundant for us for our manifestation can be unveiled. And this is not going to be easy. This man, I heard about the story. His son was saying it. How the man will make them pray. Seven hours, eight hours, sometimes two days, three days. You just, just want to just happen just like that. Hear my voice. There is pain. Everywhere is pain in me. And I will not stop. No hunger. No mistake. No, there is nothing that I will do today that will make me stop pursuing God. I am addicted. A young guy sing a song, I am addicted. Right? He's doing that friend. I'm addicted. We are addicted to all kinds of things except God. An addiction to God is very good. And sometimes anytime you realize that you are being delivered from that addiction, please go back fast and hold it again. Everyone that becomes relevant in our society, we are people that God was not a second option. God was the only option. And anytime God becomes a second option, you need to repent again. It's not bad to come back again and say, God, I give you my all. But that is when God will take you serious. In line with that, I want us to begin today, briefly before we take the communion, on the love of God. Can I have your seat quiet, please, so that I don't stress you? Be thinking about a song for communion. Is that okay? Because I will ask you, I don't want to surprise you. The love of God. John 3.16 The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned but he that believeth not is condemned already because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten. God loved the world. True. He gave his son. True. So that you and I can be saved. That means the greatest need for an unbeliever. And everyone was salvation. And God solved the greatest problem of mankind. The greatest problem of mankind was salvation. And God came and did that by giving his son. But the problem is this now. Salvation is a free gift. But many people reject the gift. God has given but we decide to reject it and when you reject what God has given to you what do you think he should do to you as your creator he created a place for you to be able to rest in torment and in pain and that place is what you call hell I believe hell is a benevolence of God hell is God trying to say okay there is no way that you will not exist at least you have to exist because God will be unjust if he doesn't permit you to exist so another way for you to exist 
after judgment in the afterlife is for you to dwell in hell. Is that okay? Because he gave you the opportunity. It's not as if it was a mystery that man should not have access to paradise. No, it has been given and I'm still saying it right now. But many of you are hearing me, but on your own you will choose hell. And whether you like it or not, there are two decisions. I have said before you life and death, you choose. And every day we make the choice. And the beautiful part of it is that so long as you are alive, you can translate from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light within the twinkling of an eye. Simple. As I'm talking to you right now, and you know your way is not right with God, you can begin to confess in your heart now, and you are translated to paradise. It looked that easy, but many people are so proud and arrogant, and they will stay till they die. They will never change their heart posture. Like witches and wizards, that the Bible says, suffer not a witch to live, because they have made a covenant with themselves that they will never stop until evil is perpetrated. And to this intent, everyone must evaluate themselves again and check how all of a sudden has my life begin to look like another kingdom that is not of light. Because God has given unto us the provision for salvation, but we have rejected it by our own violations, our own decisions, our own will, our own our, we decided on our own and we say, I don't want it. The evangelist team went for evangelism. They met some people say, I don't want this Jesus. I don't want this Jesus. I laughed. Jesus said, forgive them. For they know not what they are doing. Do you realize the father did not forgive them? That prayer could not be answered because the forgiveness was upon the cross that they saw and they rejected. So them can never receive forgiveness. Jesus said, if you deny me before men, I will deny you before my father. A day will come, your negligence to publicly acknowledge that Jesus is your Lord, you will pay for it. That's the reason why in the midst of all the revelation flying here and there, the basic of Christianity is that men are safe. Not the expand, the increase. Let us not just be increasing and expanding and people are going, are expanding and going to hell the more. No! The more we advance, the more we are conscious of our working with God. And for adventure, any time we pray, we find a way to bring ourselves back again because that is the only way we are going to survive. And the Bible says God never condemns. If anyone is condemned, it's because the person rejects salvation. It's not because God condemned you, because God cannot condemn. If he wants to condemn you from the very first place, there was no need for the availability of Jesus. And the reason why he gave Jesus is because he doesn't want to condemn no one. But immediately you decide to reject him. You on your own self, you have condemned yourself. Adam, where are you? I hide while I saw you. Did I tell you to hide? No, I have seen. Did I tell you to hide when you have seen? No. Adam on his own condemned himself. And it was God that was running after him, looking for how to get him. I get in my point now. Every backslider has a hope. Every prodigal son knows the way back home. And the father is always willing to welcome him back. In this kingdom, no door is locked until you preach your last breath. That's the reason why there is no a sinner without a future. Neither a saint without a history. Your life is not as bad as you think it is. That addiction, that challenge, that character issue... Don't worry yourself. Return back again and begin again. Because when it comes to the oppressions of God, yet again, a guy look at me and say, Apostle, I don't want any crown in heaven. No, me, I just want to make the heaven. You may look at him and laugh, but that mentality is good. I get my point now. At least if you cannot make the crown, make the heaven. If you can't sit with Apostle Paul, Apostle Peter in scripture, at least don't be in the overflow in heaven. At least you are safe. Is it not better to be on the last row in heaven than to be on the front row in hell? Somebody say, we'll be the Jagaban in hell. We'll be the big boys in hell. You don't know what you are saying. Because even your master, the devil, is not a big boy there. He's a big fool. 
Somebody say, he will sin, sin, sin. So that God will be so angry. That when God sees him, God with the anger God has, he will hold him and fling him, fling him, and throw him so he will, he will, he will not fall in the other side of hell. So that will, he will not fall where the fire is not there. You are joking. You are joking. It's the brain that God gives you. That is your problem. You have to run mad for a while so that you understand. People think all kinds of thoughts. How can a loving God create a place where people born? He didn't tell you to go there. You decide to go there by yourself. God has never sent anybody to hell. Let me tell you the sincere truth. Nobody was sent to hell by God. Everybody that went there went there by themselves. The rich man and the poor man died. The rich man find himself in paradise. The poor man find himself in hell. Who sent them there? No angel escorted them. Right now you are choosing where you should be. By yourself. Because in hell you will not see God there. So how did you get there? Yourself went there. Because you are the only one that knew there. You understand? Hell is a place where God does not dwell. It's a place isolated from God. A place where life does not exist. If God is there, he ceases to become hell. Because God cannot be in a place where that is dead. When God appears, there is life. So he will not go there because if God go to hell, hell become paradise. Because anywhere he dwell is the living God. Anything he approaches lives. So when you walk with God upon the face of the earth, the day you close your eyes, you continue to walk with him in eternity. When you walk not without him upon the face of the earth, when you close your eyes, who has been guiding you on the earth, we continue to guide you afterward. Simple. You must be deliberate about your decisions. Romans 10.10 10. The Bible is speaking, says, For with the heart a man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. These things are basic and simple. But many of you are still here. Yet again, you don't believe at all that you should always find a way to confess before God. Every day I repent. Went to foot me now. The power of God flows so mightily. People came, this one catching leg, catching this, catching this. When they are done, I went back. When we entered the hotel, I told Pastor Silas, I said, Look at your people. Some gave money, gave him. Where is the money, sir? All kinds of everybody want to. I went back. I said, Father, mercy. Because it's only me that know. That may not be too qualified, but yet again, how you use mere men. And these people will think I'm a superstar. They don't know that I'm just helped by God. You may look at a man, look at Bishop David Edible, look at that they are and think they are all knowing. It's a lie. They are just being helped by God. And all of them walk in faith as you are walking in faith. But how much more they depend upon God. That is where the difference lies. They are willing to judge God faithful at every situation. Your own is conditional. And the more you give yourself more to God, the more God commits himself to you. So men look at you and think you are a superstar. It's only you that know the moment of cry, the moment of pain. Because as I am standing here now, only God knows the tears in my heart. Only God knows the pain in my heart. Yet again, God did wonders, not minding that I'm going through pain. Do you understand know what I'm saying? Because God does not care whether your father has died or your mother has died. When you come and stand and say, In the name of Jesus, He will move. It's left for you to find consolation in Him. I have taught you, Allah's paracletus, go back and hear it again. If not, one day you wake up and say, God, why? Because it's not about you, it's about the generation, it's about the people. Our life is always a blessing. Not because we are too good, but because we make ourselves available. In a society full of all kinds of decadence, in a campus where you are, where there are all kinds of darkness, can you be the only beacon of hope and light there? And God is hoping and trusting and believing. One way or the other, one of my daughter, one of my son, 
will rise to become an emblem. And God beckon upon you as a son and a daughter. And he cannot find you. And in the midst of the cloud of the darkness, you are hidden in the thickness of the darkness. And yet again, you cannot shine. And where will the hope come from? You are waiting for when an evangelist will come to the campus. When somebody will come and you are there. May it not be told that God is looking for people to use in our region. And the basic requirement for qualification, we are not. And God will have to look for a chicken, look for a goat, look for a cow. That God should speak through a donkey. Why? God raising stones. Why? It's painful. With the heart a man believe unto righteousness. In the days of Abraham, salvation is just believing. For Abraham believed God and it was counted for him as what? So everything that referred to as righteousness to Abraham was his believing of God. That is how powerful believing can be. Abraham can sin and still believe God is still righteous. Abraham can marry three wives, two wives and still believe God is righteousness. Because anything that will make you disbelieve God is taking you out of righteousness. And by the time you are done believing, with the mouth, confession is made unto what? Salvation. Abraham was righteous, but he was not safe. Abraham was what? Righteous, but he was not safe. Because salvation is upon the finished work of Christ Jesus. Righteousness is a right standing with God. And in the days of Abraham, there was no Jesus. Right now, our righteousness is in Christ Jesus. But in the days of Abraham, it was the season of conscience. Is that true now? And that is why right now, you cannot just tell me that eh, in my heart is not pricking me. No! For you to be saved, for you to be righteous now, you must acknowledge that somebody came and paid a price. So with your pride and your arrogance, you must humble yourself and say, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. Abraham believed God. It was righteousness. But with mouth, confession is made unto salvation, unto soteria, unto so-so. How many times we made a mistake and instead of us to beckon upon the Lord and confess in our pride and arrogance, we don't care. In your heart, you may be right. You must confess with your mouth. Don't be ashamed. It's not that hard a thing to do. As I'm standing here, Lord Jesus, have mercy upon me. I may not be the perfect of all men, but I know your grace endure forever. I know your mercy has no bound. I am wretched man. Help me. Simple. There is a confidence that we stand upon the confession of our mouth unto salvation. When you don't understand this, you will die like men. men. Romans 8, 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spare not his son, but deliver him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemned? It is Christ that died. Yea, rather, that he reign again. That is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God? Who also make intercession for us? Who shall separate us? From the love of God. From the love of Christ is a tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, nakedness, perils, sword, as is written. For thy sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquered to him that love us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor power, nor things present, nor things to come, neither height, nor depth, nor any creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. It's a basic question, do you love Jesus? Do you love Jesus? Jesus is looking for people that will love him. So desperately looking for those that will love him. If there is anybody desperate for love, it's God himself. You don't believe me. 95% of all your Christian problem is solved when you can love God. 
like genuinely. I'm not talking about all this lie we lie. Genuine loving for God. If you can truly love God, 95% of your problem is solved. The remaining one is upon the standpoint of the fear of God called Iraq Adonai. Simple. Nothing again you need again. Genuine love for God, genuine fear for God. This one saved God from everything. Genuine love for God means even though he slay, you will still be there. Genuine fear for God means you will have a boundary to which there are things. You will hate the things he hates and love the things he loves. But believers don't take this serious at all. Miracle service such as this is a moment where I want to let you know as much as possible in the busyness of our days and time don't be lost thinking you are happening because just when men thought they got it that's when they fall I always tell you successful people don't fail from failure they fail from success just like I told you anytime you see an accident you will never see the car has L why? Lena don't have accident it's people that are over Sabi, they are the ones. Elena is very careful. Over Sabi person, he will even leave his hand and say, I remember. You are in the bike, you left your hand. Say, Nothing will happen. Are you okay? The people that put their hand in the bike, they are stupid. Overconfidence. And that is how many of you are doing with your spiritual life. I can never backslide. I can never do this. What do you mean? The Bible says, Take heed lest you fall. If you think you stand, stand strong. It's a command. Stand steadfast in the liberty. Because this thing is warfare. Because many people that say, I can't, they do it. Everything you say, never, never. It happened. We survive by the mercy of God. Imagine to say. Imagine to say. My jin to see, 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 my jin to my jin to see, 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 my jin to see. My dream to say, 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 Sino Darling to see Darling to see no Darling to see Darling to see no Darling to see Darling to see no Darling to see Many of you you are in love here by the mercy of God God look upon the problems in your family and say you need to be trained. God look for a place. You need to be equipped. So that after two years, after three years, after five years, you will, will, you will graduate as a giant. With certificate, with spirituality. And you can go back to your house. And the things that affect others can affect you. How? You come back as an edifice. Yet again, God brought you to laugh here. 
he became like a mistake because he became worse by the river of Babylon there they sat down as they wept while they remember Zion a time will come you will no longer be in your Zion you will be in Babylon you will cry and weep for those days where you can sing the Lord's songs a day will come you will not see brethren to pray again a day will come you will not see anybody that will encourage you you will be alone that's when you can raise a song my mom my mom called me she said I was in a place with Doen and she was showing us a news how people were at this snake farm around Kefi people were they went to farm to farm what they can eat all these full and men gather and pack all of them and took them to a place, injured them, beat them, shoot, shoot all, most of them. What kind of prayer are those guys trying to pray? If you enter those kind of situation, what will you do? Hasn't it occurred to you that you have passed through that same place and nothing happened to you? Are you more righteous than those people? I saw them weeping and crying. Sometimes we pass through things that we should die. I pass through that place. Sometimes you are going to a quanga. People are dying on that road. Nothing happened to you. Before you shout at God, please thank him for the little things he has done. Because if he withdraw his mercy, you can't survive. Thank him for the hand. A prophet, pray, pray, pray. Nothing happened. See, I saw a sign of there is no rain, no, but it's like a hand. He said, Glory be to God. Oh, King, rain is coming. But it was hand you saw. Now faith was built. We thank God for little things first before He multiply. One of the reasons why you are not growing spiritually, you have not appreciated God for that little grace He has given. Little. Because serious people value little things, little things. Let me find a picture so that we can take communion. First Corinthians 12 from 1. After salvation, the next thing you need is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit seal your story of salvation. In the book of First Corinthians from 12 from 1, you're going to see 
how Paul began to speak about the ministry gift, how there are diversities of giftings of the spirit. Everyone has a portion in those gifts. Nobody was without a gift. God gave gift to everyone. He descended, ascended, and gave gift to men. Some are offices, some are diversities of operation. No one is left without a witness, but not everybody lay hold of it. I can choose to say I have a gift for everybody in Shekinah. Meet me at home. You can decide not to come and collect. You can't hold me accountable for not collecting your gift. Hold yourself accountable for not coming to collect it. Is that okay? In the book of 1 Corinthians 12, there were diversities of giftings of the Spirit made available. Others refused to collect. Many lay hold of it. In the book of John 14, 16, he said, I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it sees him not, neither knoweth him, but yea, know him. For he will dwell with you and he shall be in you. And I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. We always have comfort in God. Let your heart never be weary. Miracle service such as this will remind ourselves of the love of God and we restore back again strength. As we pray, trusting the Lord to heal our diverse diseases, heal our diverse infirmities, we must have the faith and the courage that whatever that is available in God exists first. Because it exists first before we can ask for it. It is funny for us to be praying for what we believe does not exist. Why are you praying for the miracle if you believe it doesn't exist? Why are you praying for the healing if you believe it doesn't exist? So faith is first of all in the book of Hebrews chapter 1. is the substance of this hope for the evidence of what we cannot see. By it, elders obtain a better report. James chapter 1, 17. The Bible says every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And coming down from the Father of light with whom is no variableness, neither shall of study. So there is good gift, there are perfect gift. Is that okay? I don't have time for that. But the perfect gift of the Holy Ghost, the perfect gift of God is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Is that okay now? And it is the desire of God that we all partake of that gift of the Spirit. And I believe that some people miracle is just that they're going to partake of the gift of the Spirit. Before we take the communion or anything here, I want to, to have the understanding that beyond just all of this ritual in Christianity, there is a spirit that fuels our existence. And that spirit is the Holy Ghost. The reason why we do the things we do is the Holy Spirit. People wonder, I travel as much as possible, I'm not sick. If I was here, I would come and walk more than you. Why? There is a fuel that is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the fuel. Is that okay? So it's very, very important that you have that understanding. Luke chapter 11 from 13. The Bible speaks, if ye then, being evil, know how to give good gift to your children, how much shall your heavenly Father give you of the Holy Spirit to them that ask? We now saw good gift there, right? There are good gift, there are perfect gift. Perfect gift is the Holy Ghost. If we who are evil know how to give good gift to our children, if your child come and meet you now, Pastor Chidi, if your child come and meet you and say, Daddy, Daddy, I want biscuit, you will not go and carry snake and say, where well, I take. The father, the son, you ask you, Daddy, are you okay? Daddy, Daddy, I want bobo. You now go and carry fuel and say, take. So if we, as evil people, according to the standard of God, of course, the heart of a man is desperately what? Wicked and evil. If you with your evil, even if your child asks you for something, you still give him something that is good. How much more of God in heaven? That if we ask him, what will you think he will give us? The perfect gift of the Holy Spirit. But ask, you have not asked. He said, up till now, you have asked me nothing. Imagine God is saying, up till now, you have asked me nothing. Up till now. Jude 1 20. Bible is being said, but yet beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. How can you pray when you don't have the gift of the Holy Ghost? But it's possible to have the gift of the Holy Ghost and choose not to pray. By how? Quenching the Holy Ghost, grieving the Holy Spirit. You can decide and say, I will not pray, although you are filled with the Holy Ghost. 1 Corinthians 14.2 for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speak not unto men but unto God. For no man understandeth him how be it he speaketh mysteries. Many of you soon now we are going to call for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. To some of you that is your miracle. Before we begin to pray for others. And many as you take the communion the power of God is going to come strongly upon you. And when that power of God comes it's going to break every kinds of chains. 
oppression, every kind of thing we go. But the Holy Ghost may not still be there. So many of you, you may need the baptism of the Holy Ghost before you will say, okay, I want to partake of the communion. As you repent, it's good. But the Holy Spirit, then you can partake so that it can be a good sandwich. Is that okay? Act 2, 12. Bible says, and they were all amazed and we are in doubt, saying to one another, what meaneth this? Others mocking said, this men are full of new wine. But Peter standing up with the eleven lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea and all them that dwell in Jerusalem, be it known unto you, hearken unto my word, for these are not drunk with wine as you suppose. Bain is just the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass on the last day I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy, your young men shall see visions, your old men shall dream dreams. It was an allotment of an apportionment for everybody on the last day. On the last day, no one is permitted to be without nothing. There is no an ordinary Christian on the last day. That time has passed. Ask yourself, when was the last time you see somebody that is ordinary? Even that your friend is not ordinary. Tell yourself, I am not ordinary. I am extraordinary. Being natural is a threat. Being ordinary is a threat. That's why they kill you anyhow. You are not ordinary. That time has passed. The outpouring of the Spirit made everyone not to be ordinary. Okay. Act chapter 10, 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him. It then means that there is an anointing that can cause good to happen in the lives of men. There is an anointing that can heal the body of men. Is that true? How God anointed Jesus who went about healing. So there is an anointing that we can pray and it can come and that sickness in your body can disappear. That's the truth. So anytime you come before God as we are here as in a miracle service like this, we beckon upon the Lord and see who God let your anointing come to break yokes. Because when that anointing comes, it breaks yoke by default. The Bible says why Jesus Christ was teaching. The power of God to heal was there. It's not as if he went about healing now. The power was present. It was eager to do the healing. So by the time we begin to pray, you can pray and say, Oh God, let the anointing that breaks yokes come. Whether hands is not laid upon you, as that anointing come upon you, that can break. That's why sometimes you can pray. After you leave here, you feel light. After you leave here, you don't feel as if it's something was taken away from you. You may enter here with so much burdens. After you leave here, it's gone. That spirit has left. An anointing comes and breaks the yoke. That's how it works. Luke chapter 22 from 8. Let's enter into the communion. But before we take it, I will love us to consider briefly in 10 minutes what it is so that we can I think the welfare should be able to help out bring it, prepare it here while I give this little understanding then we I state the order how it's going to be before we do any special ministration in the book of Luke chapter 22 from 8 and he sent Peter and John saying, Go and prepare us the Passover that we may eat. And they said unto him, Where we I will not any more eat there until it be fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Anytime we take communion, we partake of the blood and the body of Jesus. If you don't take communion, you are not fully born again. Jesus said, when you don't take this, you don't have a part in me. He said, take, this is my body, this is my blood, partake of it. Forget about the religiosity that they have put in it. The mystery in keeping to it is to partake of the blood and the body of Jesus. And the token that guarantee our salvation is the body and the blood. In remembrance of it, we do a revelation to accept that sacrificial walking. It was nothing mysterious that fell from heaven. It was not manna. They went to a house 
and they prepared it and they ate of it and out of it was a communion made. It will be to you whatsoever you believe. But there has to be a believing in the Lord. Seventeen. And he took the cup and gave thanks and said, Take this. And he divided among yourself. For I say unto you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom shall come. And he took the bread and gave thanks and break it and give unto them saying, This is my body which is given for you. This do remembrance of me. Likewise, also the cup after supper saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood which is shed for you. Out of what they have eaten in Passover, he took of it and blessed it and distributed it to them. If that thing did not happen, Jesus Christ would have died in the cross alone. But from that, he was able to include all of us to him. When they flogged him, we were flogged. As his blood went out, our own too went out. And that is why it was from then that all the apostles began to go out representing him. And they do the same thing in remembrance so that the body of Christ can come into the same common union. What you call communion is actually common union. Now all of us come into oneness together through a mystery of penetration as an intercourse out of the same cup, out of the same living bread. They took of it. And by that, all of them partake of the suffering and partake of the pain so that they can also partake of the glory and the victory. So he died with us and he rose again with us. But we have to do this always in remembrance of him so that we maintain that revelation. So you have to believe that as you partake of it, it is the body of Jesus and it's the blood of Jesus. There, in that house, it was what the earth that was remaining and they partake of it and they call it communion. I can take this water right now. Right. Ordinary normal water. Right. I can drink of it now. And I can give everybody to drink. And you are initiated. Yes. It's a mystery of communion. Every occultic society and fraternity do communion. Every religion do communion. Babala do communion. Communion is one of the powerful mysteries in the body of Christ that unites us together. So that the strength is distributed and the weakness is also distributed. Go with me to the last scripture so that you understand why you need to repent now before we partake of this. Because some of you will be the reason why some of us will backslide. Because you are going to distribute to us your carnality and distribute to us your prayerlessness. But mind you, I thank God I have people that can pray here. Their own grace will be distributed. Why? Because every house functions by the grace that each joins supply. So as you are trying to bring your own stupidity to us, our own will push your own out. Are you getting my point now? It's the power of communion. That's why you can marry a lady that is prayerless and you too become prayerless. You can suddenly marry a lady as you sleep with her. The witches and the wizards in her family come and say, Welcome home. Ah! But this lady is from Agbadibo. You are from uh, Kansho. See, it doesn't matter. We are all one now. The two has become one. What is going to happen today? All of us are going to become one. So you go back home, you will see wisdom in your dream. You go back home, you will see righteous in your dream. You go back home, you will see Osikanya in your dream. You say, what are you doing here? Well, we do communion. It's a mystery. That was how they were knitted together. It's not bad as it were. Why? Because strength is distributed. The goal of it is so that we don't fight alone. I will take a series on spiritual warfare. One of the key in spiritual warfare is never fight alone. In the day they come to attack you, call upon someone. And sometimes in your dream, paraventure, nobody comes to stand by you. You have not been taking communion. If you are taking communion in your church, either your reverend will appear or somebody will appear. After tonight, that battle doesn't belong to you again. 
it belongs to all of us. And when they appear at night, we will be many that we appear. How can they survive? That is the power of communion. So they do this so that they can be knitted together in oneness. It's part of the apostolic culture. Continue in it always. Always. As they pray, as they fast, they break bread. Last scripture. 1 Corinthians 11, 18. For first of all, when you come together in the church, I hear that there is division among you. And partly, believe it, for there must be also heresies among you. That they which are approved may be manifest among you. When you come together, therefore, into one place, this is not to eat the Lord's Supper. For in eating, everyone take it before other his own supper. And one is hungry, and another is drunk. For I have received of the Lord that which also I have delivered unto you. That the Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took the breath. And when he has given thanks, he break it and said, Take it. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after the same manner also he took the cup. When he has soup from the same, saying, This cup is a new testament in my blood. Do this, yea, as oft as you think of it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, yea, do show the Lord's death till thy come. Wherefore, whatsoever shall whosoever shall eat of this and drink of this cup unwordly shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself and so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unwordly eateth and drinketh damnation to himself not discerning the blood's body. For this cause many are weak, many are sick among you and many slept, many died. For if we judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastised of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. What have you not house to eat and to drink in? The spice ye, the church of God, and shame, shame them that have not. What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in all this? I praise you not. The cruise of this matter, because I want us, I don't want to take much time. The cruise of this matter is you need to discern the body as you partake of it. A lady came to church and took communion and said, All this we say is blood, blood, blood. Is it not normal thing they gave us? And she felt, Okay, let me go and go outside and check it to see whether it's blood. To her shocking surprise, after she took it, she went outside. She went and poured it and discovered it turned to blood. Was it blood before? It was not. But because she refused to discern the body and she wanted to test God and put God into test, it became of her as it is. And the challenge of it is this. She has brought a curse upon herself. Because that is the reason why many people go through all kinds of things. Why? Many partake of this cup unworthily. Many partake of this cup with all kinds of iniquity in their heart. That's why I said, if your way is not right with God right now, I know in many churches they will say, wait to come and repent. Repent now. We don't need any special whatsoever. No, no, no. Because my desire is everybody should partake of the communion. But if you feel that you are not qualified, as scripture said, you can repent in your heart now. I have taught you all through. Ask the Lord in your heart and say, Father, have mercy upon me. As I partake of your body, as I partake of your blood, I may not be worthy, but make me worthy. Who makes men worthy before? We don't make ourselves worthy. It is him that makes us worthy. You ask him again, Father, make me worthy. So in our heart, can we begin to ask the Lord and say, Father, show me mercy. And as I partake of this, may I not be a worthy let me come into common union. Oneness with you in the name of Jesus. 
Welfare, can you come help me? Bring in it here. Where's the welfare department? Take of it. I need you to believe God that by the mystery of the blood and the mystery of the body, you partake of the body that has been bruised and the blood that has been shed. Let it heal you, let it purge you, let it purify you, and let it sanctify you. Ministers. Can you come forward to help me? The order. Because of time, so that we go back to continue other things. We are going to pray on it. Then, we are going to be following an order. As you come here, you will take it. And you will be giving the the blood, and you will be given the body. Normally, you are supposed to break it, then you take it. Is that okay? The body has to be broken. Is that okay? And normally, they speed the blood small, but you don't have to. We have speed it. You break it, then you take it. Then you return back to your seat, praying heavily in tongues as you go into the order of the service. Is that okay? Is that understood? So protocol, you are going to guide them on how to come. I don't want it to be loud. Normally, we could have given it to your seat, but it's going to be somehow before you splash it on yourself. So ministers, can we pray on it? It has been blessed. This came directly from living faith. Church, it has been blessed by Bishop David Oedipo. So don't worry yourself. One stronger like a father has blessed it. I won't do anything just like that. You can unveil it, unveil it. Father, we pray upon this. As that as we partake of this, let this be a testament to your resurrection, a testament to your triumph, a testament to your victory. The devil has no power over your people. We ask that as we partake of the body and we partake of the blood, may we go stronger. If there be anyone among God that is not qualified, we ask, oh God, show mercy. If there be anyone that is sick in their body, as they partake of this, let there be healing. Let there be deliverance. Let there be emancipation by the power of the Holy Ghost. And we ask, oh God, may your blood bring cleansing. May your blood bring cleansing, bring healing, bring deliverance. If there be an infirmity that has been there for so long, we ask as we partake of this, let it disappear. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. So, you are going to be happy to administer to them, right? 
So we are going to start from the back. As we come, you take, you drop, you drop the cup. Then you go back to your seat, praying heavily. Let's take your own. Let's start from ourselves first. Oh, it's my cup, Lord. It's my cup, Lord. It is blessed already. So as you take it. Okay, let's have the cup. Be fast, be fast. We don't have time, we don't have time. As you go to your city, praying in tongues heavily. Pray on your prayer point. Heavily. Oh, if you have not written your prayer request, now is the time to write it. Shout and let the kid about the Alaba Sata. Run for you, be fast, be fast. I want us to become fast.
now is the time to challenge the gate of darkness. As the Lord Father strengthen me for the journey ahead. Strengthen me for this next month. I step into the next month with fire. I step into the next month with glory. I step into the next month with grace. I step into the next month with grace. I step into the next month with fire, grace, strength. Step into next month with fire. Yes, the month of August. Let your gate be open. August, August. Let your gate be open. August. Let your gate. August. Let your gate be open. Prophesy to the month of August. Prophesy to the month of August. Speak unto the month of August. Let your gate be open. I enter as a champion. I enter as a champion. I am a large. I am a king. I enter August as a champion. I enter August as a champion. By fire, by flame. I prophesy unto August. I prophesy. Yield your fruit. Yield your increase. Yield your fruit. Yield your increase. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Yes, 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 yes. The Lord will empower you. The Lord please rest upon you. The Lord please rest upon you. The Lord please rest upon you. The Lord Jesus rest upon you. His grace, his power, his might rest upon you. I restore your fire for God. I restore your hunger for God. I restore your desires for God. I restore your flames for God. I restore it. Let the fire burn. Let the fire burn. Let the fire burn. Time is past time, but I will not allow any gate of hell to prevail over your life. Right now is time. We stand against every authority of the gate of hell. Let it hear a sound of victory. He said, Lift up your heads, O ye gate. Be ye open, ye everlasting doors. For the king of glory comes. Tonight is a night of victory. By the power and the emblem of the Almighty, I call you higher. Out of that pit where there is no water, I call you higher. Out of that muddy clay, I set you free from that oppression of the kingdom of darkness. Let those chains begin to break, even right now, even right now, by the flames and by the fire of Elohim. I decree as many that are sick in their body, I release fire upon your body now. 
I release fire upon your body now. I set you free right now. which you have written as a request let the flame of the Holy Ghost let the flame of the Holy Ghost begin to burn now from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet I restore back the fire I restore back the grace I restore it back I restore it back I restore it back Shakaina glory, Shakaina glory, Hallelujah. Our time is fast spent. There are a few set of people I'll pray for today. If you know you are here and somehow at night you used to have strange demonic oppression at night. Spirit come to molest you. Come to oppress you. Come to bless you. Tonight is a night of victory. Run to the front now fast. Be at this side. At this side. If you know somehow at night you cannot sleep, you are being oppressed, you are being molested, run to this side. The next set of people is anyone that is sick in his body. If you know you are sick in your body and you have tried your best, and yet again that infirmity has refused to go, come to this side. Is that understood? I don't want us to be rowdy. If you are sick in your body, you came here with any kind of infirmity. Whether whatever it is, you can help them. Sickness in your body, come towards this side. You are being oppressed at night. Please come to this side so that we can be free. I hope you understand what I'm saying. Lord has said, hands come upon you. Let that you break. Let that sickness vanish. And also if you have had cycle of failure, cycle of failure, I fail again and again and again. Stay calm, join them. Somehow you don't understand. Why failure has become your name? No problem, join them and end. Come. As hands are laid upon you now, the flame and the fire of the Holy Ghost, we break that yoke. Ministers, please help me pray for them. I will also lay hands. Let no one escape no sword. He that escaped the sword of Elijah, as a hair we slay. He that escaped that of as a hair, Jehu we slay. Ministers, let's be fast. As hands come upon you, that oppression go. I see someone they have been threatening you with death. Death is a lie. I elongate your life. You shall not die, you shall live. We say be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. 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 
Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Online, be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. I will release fire for the next journey. At the count of three, as many that have lost strength, as many that have become weary in this Christian journey, I decree right now, let another measure be added unto you. At the count of three, one, two, three, receive the fire, 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 receive the fire. Receive the fire. I activate your calling in God. I activate your calling in God. No more. No more. You will not remain small. You will not remain small. I baptize you with fresh fire. I baptize you with fresh grace. I baptize you with fresh fire. I baptize you with fresh grace. I baptize you. I baptize you. I baptize you. As many of you that are not filled with the Holy Ghost and you want to be baptized with the Holy Ghost, please come to the front. If you know you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, please come to the front. For those that have been prayed for, if you go, go and check yourself. If you are healed, come and testify. Maybe we can take only two. If you know you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, and you want to be baptized, run to the front now. If you know you are not filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues and you desire, I want to pray in tongues, Apostle. Come and join them. Don't be afraid. Yes, join them. It's a work of faith. As you join them, ask the Holy Ghost, say, Father, baptize me with your fire. Baptize me with your grace. Our hands will come upon you now. Ministers, please, sorry I'm troubling you. Let's pray for them again. As hands come upon you, your tongues will be loose now. You are going to begin to pray in other tongues. Is by faith. Receive the baptism. Receive it. I lose your tongues. We lose your tongues in the name of Jesus. We lose your tongues. Online. If you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, I release the fire of the Holy Ghost upon you now. I baptize you with fire. I baptize you with fire. I lose your tongues. I lose your tongues. Online, if you are sick in your body, I say be healed. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Do not pass me by, Lord. 
The Lord restore your fire. The Lord restore your hunger. The Lord restore your fire. The Lord restore your hunger. Receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I lose your tongues. I lose your tongues. I lose your tongues. It comes like a stammering of tongues. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Ghost. Yes. Yes, the Holy Ghost is upon you. Open your mouth and pray. Not in English, not in Alsa. I break that yoke. I break that yoke. Receive the baptism. You are ready pray. You are ready pray. Out of her. Out of her in the name of Jesus. 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 Let the fire of the Holy Ghost. Let it burn you. I baptize you. I baptize you. Yes. Yes. Receive the Holy Ghost. Receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Ghost. I lose your tongues. I lose your tongues. Your tongues are loose. Oh, just collect prayer requests. We are done. Collect prayer requests. Submit prayer requests. Let's be clarify we are done. Ushers fast, prayer request, prayer request. In the next two minutes, we are done. Allow those under the anointing. Allow them, allow them. Ushers be fast. Please be fast, be fast. Thy glory, We cry for your glory, We cry for your glory, we long for your glory, Adonashiva. We cry for your glory. We long for your glory, Adonashiva. Oh, Messiah. Oh, shall bring me the request. Bring the request fast. Ministers, please. Let's pray for this request in two minutes. Bring the request, bring them, please. We don't have time. Online submit your request on the comment section. Bring them, bring them. Holy Ghost, we are one, we are one. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, we are one. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, we are one. Ministers, please come and help me. Let's be done with this. We are one. Oh, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, we are one. Oh, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, we are one. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Stretch out your hand towards the request and pray. Pray for your request. My own is here too. Say, oh God, we turn them to testimonies. 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 We run and I. Holy Spirit, you are an eye to me. You are an eye. Holy Spirit, you are an eye to me. You are an eye. Holy Spirit, you are an eye to me. You 
on a life. Holy Spirit, you on a life today. You on a life. Holy Spirit, you on a life today. You on a life. Holy Spirit, you on a life today. Oh God, we turn this to testimonies. We turn this to testimonies. Online, we turn your request to testimonies. We don't know which to be real. Let me go straight here. Rapa, 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 shut up, Baladu. We don't know which to be real. 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 O filho se afasta aí. O filho se afasta aí. Thank you, Jesus. This prayer request, the answers are granted in the name of Jesus. Whatever that is written here, we decree speedy answers in the name of Jesus. Father, breathe upon this and grant speedy answers to this in the mighty name of Jesus. And the matter, amen. As such, we pray. We ask of God, Father, by faith, in agreement, we turn every request here to a testimony in the name of Jesus. We ask, oh God, let every heart desire here become a reality. Whatever we have written here, oh God, we ask, oh God, they become a testimony. There is nothing hard for you. With men it may be impossible, but with you all things are possible. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Rise up on your feet as we decree over you. I ask that as we go, may the presence and the power of the Lord go with you. And I decree and I declare, none of us will be lost. I pray in this season, may the grace of the Lord keep you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Before I make the final benediction, if you are here, you know your way is not right with God and somehow you just feel the need to be born again. Protocol help. You know, you have never at any moment given your heart to Jesus and you are here, you say, Apostle, can you help lead me to Christ? Please, can you run to the front? We are done. It's because of you I'm taking this extra moment. You are here you know, you used to be on fire for God. You used to love the Lord, but somehow you backslid it. And now, you feel you want to reconnect yourself back to God. Please, can you run to the front? Let me lead you to Christ. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. It's because of you we do the things we do. If you are online, you can send a DM and say, you want to make your way right with God. That's beautiful. It means the word of God is being rooted in our heart. So can you rise up on your feet and lift up your hands as I make the final proclamation. I decree this week is blessed for you in the name of Jesus. I ask as many of you trusting the Lord for a miracle, I provoke it for you in the name of Jesus. As many of you that are writing exams or are about to write an exam, I ask, may God's favor go with you in the name of Jesus. And I decree and I declare over you, I ask, oh God, every evil report over your life is cancelled in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you, as many of you that are trusting the Lord for certain financial blessings, I decree, let it be released in the name of Jesus. 
None of us will die by mistake in the name of Jesus. I banish every curses over your life. I rebuke every satanic attack over your life. In the name of Jesus. The Lord empower you and keep you and guide you. In Jesus mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. I'm just reminded we have not welcomed the special people among us. Please, if today is the first time you are fellowshipping with us in Shakaina, please run to the front. I realize uh, if today is your first time fellowshipping with us in Shakaina, please run to the front. We cannot wait but have you here. Welcome to Shekinah where everybody is somebody and Jesus is the Lord you are Wow. Our time is fast, man. Thank you so much for coming. This is welcome you again to Shakaina. This is Shakaina. It's a meeting put together by God. We all are born servant. We are just doing our best to the village. We meet here every Saturday by 5 p.m. We can be here for to begin pray, and we meet again on Tuesday outside there for convergence. Uh, we pray from four to six. We can do well to be a part of any and come and go spiritually. Church, can you stretch forth your hands towards them and pray for them and ask as they are here and as they have come that the Lord God hearken unto their heart desires. It's our desire that as you came, may Jesus go with you. I ask may the Lord bless you. May the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord empower you. We decree that as you go, receive a testimony. Every oppression is broken over your life. Every curse is shattered. I decree may you grow in God. May you continually love in the Lord in the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you and empower you and cause his face to shine upon you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Please, just by this way, you're going to see the counseling department. The counselors will meet to you and just take your details then you have your say thank you so much and uh, we are excited that you came we hope to see you again on Saturday we begin another series and we trust God you will be a part of it and go thank you so so much uh, but I venture you tune in while the service was going and the offering and the tithe and the partnership was taken and you still feel you want to make a commitment uh, you can still do that the ushers are still there. You can still make a commitment. And also, please, just to let you know, the evangelism unit is still open. As many that want to be a part. And also, all departments are still open. If you want to be a part of the workforce, you feel like you don't have a commitment that is taking your time. And you want to be a part of those that will work in the house of God. Please notify the counseling department there. They will be glad to take your name. And we will reach to you. Thank you so much. The Lord bless you and strengthen you in the name of Jesus. Can we receive the grace and fellowship? May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship with the Holy Spirit be and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. Turn to your neighbor and tell them, I am mounting up. Uh -huh. Please, just to let you know, available kekes are out there. As you just go out there, there are kekes that will take you to different locations. So please, go straight as fast as possible. And those with buses, there are buses, cars, I will take you. Collect each other's number. For all you have done for us, we've come to say we are grateful.